All right, here we go with quantitative gas law problems. This will be the last thing we do in unit two. So don't forget you got your test coming up here Thursday for periods one and two and Friday for four and five. All right, so let's say in this first problem here, we have a 300 milliliter gas at standard temperature and pressure. Standard temperature and pressure is going to be zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna say, this is gonna be our initial, our initial values. Pressure is gonna be one atmosphere. Volume's gonna be 300 milliliters. The particle number I'm not really worried about. It's not gonna change. And my temperature is zero Celsius, but don't forget, you gotta be in Kelvin when you're dealing with gases because pressure and volume are dependent on particle motion. And that Kelvin scale is the only scale that is designed around particle motion. So zero Celsius is 273 Kelvin. All right, so what we're gonna do here with this gas is let's just say we increase the temperature, we go up to room temperature. So the temperature is gonna increase to 22 degrees Celsius, okay? Now, what is that gonna do to my volume? So let's say this gas is expandable. So the temperature is gonna jump up to 22 degrees. That's gonna be an increase on the Kelvin scale to what, 295, 273, 283 to 93, 295 Kelvin. That's gonna be an increase. Particle number, like I said, I'm not worried about. Volume, I am not sure what my final volume is going to be yet, but I do know that, you know, considering my volume temperature graph, if temperature increases, volume increases. So based on that, I know my volume is going to increase if my temperature increases. If it's expandable, then my, my pressure really should hold constant, so I should get no change there. All right, so how do we actually do this problem? We're going to take our 300 milliliters and we're gonna multiply by a factor that represents that temperature change. Now, if my temperature's going up, I need to use a factor that's more than one. So I'm gonna take this temperature change and say 295 over 273. So my volume, 300 milliliters, times 295 divided by 273. And that is going to give me a, a volume of 324.2 milliliters. If I needed to go sig figs, I probably would have had a zero there. So this would actually be, uh, that would be my final answer right there. So if I get a temperature increase of 22 degrees Celsius, that's going to give me a new volume of 300. 24.2 milliliters. All right, let's look at another one here. Let's say we have a, uh, on this problem here, we have a propane tank at room temperature uh, with two atmospheres of pressure. Now this tank is gonna be a fixed volume. So my volume is gonna be, let's just say it's a five gallon tank. My volume's not gonna change, so I'm just gonna put five gallons here for my final. This is my initial, this is my final, this is my change. So I'm gonna have five gallons start, I'm gonna have five gallons at the end, I'm not really worried about it. Particle number, let's say we, uh, we put uh, five times the number of particles in there. So let's just say my particle number is one. If I put uh, five times the number of particles, I'm gonna say, we're just gonna call that a factor of five to one. So that means my particle number is gonna increase. Uh, Maybe we leave this tank out overnight and the temperature drops to, I don't know, maybe it, maybe the temperature drops to 12 degrees Celsius, all right? My initial temperature is gonna be 295 Kelvin. If I get a drop of 12, then we're talking 283 Kelvin temperature is going to decrease. Now my, my 
pressure was two atmospheres, what kind of pressure change can I expect? Well, I got two things going on here. My particle number is going to go up, but my temperature is going to drop. So my pressure should increase due to my particle number going up, but it should actually decrease based on a temperature change here of, of 295 to 283. So let's take a look here. Let's say we have two atmospheres to start. Let's deal with our particle number first. We're gonna go ahead and fill that tank up with five times the number of particles. That's a five to one factor. And then we have a factor of decrease here. We're gonna get a temperature change of, of about a drop of 12 here. So we're gonna say uh, 295 to 283. So what would that do to my, what would that do to my pressure? Well, remember you have pressure and temperature Kelvin. You have a pretty direct relationship here. So if I'm getting a drop, then I should expect my pressure to drop because of that. So because of that, I'm going to go 283 over 295. So I got a factor of increase of five to one, particle number's going up, but then I get a temperature drop, so this factor here is less than one. So I'm gonna take two atmospheres times five, times 283 divided by 295, and my pressure should jump up to 9.6 atmospheres which makes sense. My particle number is being multiplied by five. You're pumping a lot of particles in there, so that tank is highly pressurized, so 9.6 makes a lot of sense. The temperature's playing a pretty minimal role. All right, let's say we have a, a uh, 0 0.70 liter cylinder in a V8 Nissan Titan engine here. It's at 100 degrees Celsius and standard pressure. So standard pressure is gonna be one atmosphere. My temperature is 100 degrees Celsius, but remember we gotta be in Kelvin there. So 273 plus 100 would be 373 Kelvin. And let's see here, my volume to start out is 0 0.070. Particle number I'm not really concerned with at the moment. All right, so what's gonna happen here? Let's say that we, we, uh, we compress this volume. So we're gonna drop our volume volume is going to decrease 2.35 liters and let's say maybe my temperature temperature holds constant we don't need to worry about temperature right here let's just worry about volume okay so my volume is going to drop in half so 0.35 <laughs> liters Particle number I'm not concerned with. Temperature is gonna remain 373 Kelvin, so I'm not worried about that. My pressure is going to change based on this change in volume. So remember, on your um, pressure volume, this is the only relationship that's inverse. So if I get a volume that drops in half, my pressure should, should double. Okay, so let's take a look here. We have a one atmospheres of pressure and my volume is going to drop in half so I'm going to say 0.35 liters and it was 0 0.70 liters so I should get a new pressure whoops I did that opposite I did that wrong I gotta remember what I said if my volume let's say my volumes here at 0.7 and I drop in half to 0.35 my pressure should come up somewhere in there. Okay, so I need to take this factor and flip it around. So one atmosphere, 0.7 over 0.35. This is gonna give me a, it's gonna double my pressure. So 2.0 atmospheres. All right, one more, one more. So in this problem here, we got a bicycle tire. It's 
got 80 psi. The volume is 3.0 liters and the temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. So here we go. Initial pressure, 80 psi. Volume is 3 liters. Particle number doesn't really matter. Let's just say we call it a 1. And my temperature is 30 degrees Celsius, which 273 plus 30, 283, 293, 303. All right. Let's say in this tire, we, uh, we spring a leak and we lose, oh, I don't know, we lose 20% uh, loss of particles and maybe the temperature increases to 40 degrees Celsius. All right, so my temperature is gonna come up by 10 degrees, that's going to be a new temperature of 313 Kelvin. So temperature is going to come up. I'm, I got a 20% loss of particles. So let's just say my new particle number is 0.8. Particle number is coming down. Maybe my volume holds constant at 3. So no change there. What is going to be my new pressure? All right, so we can take, we could take that 80 psi let's deal with our temperature change first what do i know about temperature and pressure if temperature kelvin increases my pressure increases so if i'm getting an increase there i'm going to go 313 over 303 but then i get a loss of 20 percent of my particles and if i consider my particle number against pressure also a, a linear direct relationship as such. So if I, if I decrease in particle number, my pressure should come down. So because of that, I'm gonna say 0.8 over one. So if I take this 80 PSI, I'm gonna multiply by 313 divided by 303 times 0.8. And I'm going to get a new PSI, a new, a new pressure in that tire of 66.1 PSI.